Hey kids, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. This is part two of lesson seven in module four. And we've already done uh, the whole first half on the previous video. So we're just getting into number two. There's just so much on this page and it takes a while. And I want you to be able to get in and out of these videos as quickly as possible. Anyhow, we're using our tape diagrams um, to find a fraction of a number. And uh, so we're gonna be drawing some tape diagrams and let's get right to it. There are 48 students going on a field trip. One fourth of the 48 students are girls. How many boys are going on the trip? So it sounds like we know the total. So why don't we just draw that tape diagram, put the 48 students on top. Notice that sometimes they're gonna give you a fraction in word form, okay? So you need to be able to see what it is. Where's the denominator in this problem? Well, it's right here with the word fourth. So the denominator is telling you the number of pieces that you need to put into your tape diagram. Very important. But also the question that they're asking is not about the fraction. It says one fourth are girls. How many boys are going on the trip? So that's going to be this here. So it's three fourths of 48 that I'm really interested in. 3 fourths of 48. You can still find, and as you know, we will find 1 fourth of 48 as the one unit. But if you look at it, we've got our four units that make 48. So one unit would be 48 divided by four. 48 divided by four, you should be able to do this mental math recognizing that this is a one and this is a two or 48 divided by four is 12 or 12 times four is 48. So one unit is 12. Now I don't really need to know about the girls, okay? I need to know how many boys. So that is the three from the three fourths of the total. And so three units would be the 12 times three for 36, okay? And so 36 boys are going. There you go. Okay, so be careful with what they are giving you versus what they're asking you to find. Let's continue. Now this one is just like, woo, way out of left field. Okay, totally different. We don't do ge uh, geometry until f module five. You probably have never seen any of this and have no idea what any of these are because I... Kids are always like, what, when they look at this problem. Don't be afraid. It's super cool, fun, but let's break it down into about 20 pieces. Okay. Three angles are labeled below with arcs. These are lines here. The angle is what is created when the lines come together. So this right here is an angle. This right here is an angle, okay? So, you know, you can put your hands together and say, ooh, look at the angle I just made, or, you know, I'm gonna make an acute angle. It's so cute, it's so small, or obtuse, it's a really big angle. So there are all kinds of different ways you can make an angle, an angle is when two rays come together and they meet at this little vertex point. So anyway, now that I messed that all up and I wanna make it pretty again, I'm gonna erase my stuff. So three angles are labeled below with arcs. These are the arcs. The arcs identify that there is, in fact, an angle there that we have to find. The smallest angle, this one, you just have to eyeball it, is 3 eighths as large as the 160 degree angle. Now 3 eighths as large as is like saying 3 eighths of. Okay, so again, more new language, it's just all new, everything's new every day. So if I wanna know the size of this one because they're telling me that this is three eighths of that amount. And then I have to go find this. You can't worry about this yet. Let's only worry about this one step. So I have three eighths of 160 as my first problem. Now that should look a whole lot like the ones we did at first on the previous side, a fraction of a number. Look at what I do with that number. This is the whole I break it into these pieces. So we're gonna do the same thing here, easy peasy. T 
take your 160. That's your hole. It needs to be broken into eight pieces. You can do that by doing half, half of each side, and then half each of the quarters. Now I have eight even pieces. I need to know what 3 eighths are. So it's this section here. So if eight pieces or eight units make 160, let's find one unit. Okay, so it's 160 divided by eight. 160 divided by eight, again, looking for that mental math that is really fun and easy. Then I have 16 divided by eight for two, but hold that place value position because zero divided by eight is zero and you have to put that. So um, if one unit is 20 and I need to know three units, that would be 20 times three. 20, 40, 60, mental math again, if you need to, repeated addition if you need to, I don't care, whatever, do what you need to, because this is 60. Now, all that's telling you is that the size of this angle here is 60 degrees. I know that this is 160, I now know that this is 60. What I don't know is what angle A is. And also what I don't know because I'm only in fifth grade and I haven't done a whole lot of geometry yet. In fact, none this year. Thank you very much, Eureka Math. What I don't know is that the sum of all the angles right here that would make a circle should add up to 360 degrees. Okay, where are you gonna get that fact? Out of the blue, it's just a math fact. And so after a while you'll learn it and I'm just telling you now, the sum of all three need to add up to 360. The sum of all the angles, if there were four here, they would still have to add up to 360. If there were 27 angles in here, they would all have to add up to 360. The sum of all the angles needs to equal 360. So now that you have this very important information, you could almost make a little tape diagram just to show that 360 is the total and that I have 160, and I have 60, and I have a missing angle. And so this right here is basically the mathematical representation of what we're trying to do with this. So it really becomes not that hard. I don't have to do another fraction of a number. I just need to find the piece of the whole that is missing. So what do you do with these? You have to add them up, 160 and 60. You have to put together so that you can get the sum of these so that you can take it away from the total that you would have. And now this should look just like all the things we've been doing so far this year. No regrouping necessary. So angle A is 140 degrees. This little thing, another thing. It's a, it's, it's a little tiny open circle that you put up. It's like an exponent and it's just gonna be right up there. Make it tiny, otherwise it looks like a zero. Watch out, make it not look like a zero. It has to float, okay? Angle A is 140 degrees and there's your answer. All right, let's do C. Okay, Abby spent five eighths of her money and saved the rest. If she spent, she spent five eighths and she spent $45. How much money did she have at first? This is sounding a whole lot like these other ones where I know part, but I don't know the whole. And if you thought that, you'd be right. Okay, so if Abby spent five out of eight parts, then I can make eight parts and identify five. One, two, three, four, five, five eighths, okay? Now she spent this five and it equals 45. Five pieces make 45. Five units make 
45. So I wonder what one unit is. Well, let's take that total that we have here and divide it by how many pieces? Starting to catch on. I know you're going, oh, well, I know, well, I know that. 45 divided by 5. One unit is 9. So if you look at this and you say, okay, 9 times 5 is 45, that's great because this is a part to whole relationship. So now that I have this, how much money did she have at first? If this is 5 and this is 8, then it's 8 units equal 9 times 8 because it's the 1 times all. You can find any portion of this too. And so 8 units would be 72 dollars and that is what she had at first. $72 at first. There you go. See how they just toss that in there? Like, don't trip. Ugh. Okay, last one. Huzzah! Mrs. Harrison used 16 ounces of dark chocolate mm, while baking. She used two-fifths of the chocolate of that to make some frosting and use the rest to make brownies. How much more chocolate did she use in the brownies than in the frosting? So let's take our 16 ounces and divide it into the five sections. Tape diagram, 16 OZ, that's your abbreviation. She used two to make frosting. Okay, so this is frosting here, and the rest to make brownies. Okay, so how much more chocolate did Mrs. Harrison use in the brownies than the frosting? This is a comparison. Now, if you look at your tape diagram, you can see what's happening here. That What they're trying to do is they're saying, well, if I've got this for this and I've got this for this, what is this here? Sorry, it's so crooked, but really that's the area that we need to be concerned with because that's the difference. Okay, so let's do the math now. We'll take a look at our whole five units with 16 ounces. I want one unit. So it's going to be 16 divided by 5. Now 16 divided by 5 is not an exact uh, whole number. So if you want to set it up, 16 divided by 5, you can see that you have your uh, whole number here, your fraction here. Now write your one unit, 3 and 1 fifth. And so that's what each of these would be. Now, when you look at your, your um, tape diagram, you can see that all you need is the difference. These two pieces are equal, but the comparison is how much more in this one than in this one. Well, this is three pieces or three units, three units minus two units equals one unit. I really just need to know what one unit is. And I have it right here. Three and one fifth ounces is one unit. And so the difference, or how much more chocolate, is three and one fifth. She used three and one fifth ounces more in the brownies. Yay. Okay, and I hope this is helpful. Again, click subscribe, come back again. I will see you on another math video another day. Have an excellent afternoon. Bye for now.